hello my darlings, the long-awaited Daddy Part 6 is here. I hope you enjoy it just as much as they did the previous parts. <clears throat> but before we dive right into it, I would like to remind you to watch the video until the end. Like or dislike it and comment something down below. This way you can support me with the YouTube algorithm. But in addition, what you could also do is draw fan art, share the video around, and uh, maybe take clips from this video and post them on TikTok. You have my permission. Just, you know, link to my stuff and have like somewhere some text saying, hey, this is sweet to all people, please watch them. Just ideas, throwing them around. Um, because if I would, you know, be able to live off of YouTube, I would have more time to write more stuff for you. How does that sound? Huh? Anyways, anyways, uh, I'm getting too deep into it. Just do what I just told you, please. I'm begging you. And uh, yeah, if you haven't seen the previous parts, which should be like six or seven parts, because I do 0 0.5 episodes with this, where uh, they're essentially filler. Um, well, watch them. Uh, pause the video and watch them. There's a playlist in the description. Now let's get right into it, shall we? He had awoken from a nightmare. And by now you were used to them. It felt like nothing at this point. As the horrible visions fade, you absentmindedly raised your right arm to stare at its new coloration. Your new veins seemed to change color depending on your mood. Right now they were blue. It had been three days since that happened to you. And you still struggled to deal with your body's changes. Worst of all, you still had no idea who sent you that package. What actually was inside the needle? How many quirks? And what quirks? And most importantly, what was in those other twenty? Korugiri had referred to you as normal, but you didn't feel any different. Most importantly, your brain was still inside your skull. Wait, was it? You checked the mirror every day just to make sure. Tumurai visited you reluctantly right now. He was surprised, to say the least. In fact, he might have been a little jealous. But at least that was over and done. Ah, oh, my lady, you are finally awake. Your eyes move to your right. Kurugiri stood there, already in a deep bowing position. You had needed the comfort of a familiar face in this time. And while your brother was highly against it, it seemed your own commands over your uncle were now held more weight than Tomura's. You would have sat up straight, and the shadow took a step closer, taking a comb from your nightstand before gently brushing your hair with it. Any attempt so far at trying to shorten it failed. Whatever your hair was made out of now, it was very resistant. Even fire didn't work. Where's Nomo? You asked quietly. The creature is in the kitchen, preparing the lady's breakfast. The monster's cooking ability had dramatically increased. Today's breakfast are caramel apple cinnamon rolls, scrambled eggs with diced ham, and freshly squeezed orange juice. These two really treated you like royalty now. Around the hundredth comb stroke you spoke up again. Is two hundred really necessary? Korogire nodded. The lady's hair needs to be taken care of properly, as it cannot be cut. Right. You muttered in response and blinked. Can can you hum that song to me again? Almost instantly, your uncle began to hum. You called it a song, but 
He just hummed in the rhythm of his soft strokes. When he was finally done, he neatly placed the comb back in your nightstand. Once again, he bowed before you and assisted you in getting out of bed. Ever since you turned, your limbs felt alien, like your nerves themselves weren't sure what to do. And sometimes you thought your own body was rejecting your existence. You weren't even eating out of hunger anymore. You just didn't feel it. Nor were you thirsty. Were you even human at this point? Was Korogiri right with you being a Nomu? And a silver tiara with a ruby in the center. It had been a gift from your dad on your twelfth birthday. You had felt like a princess when you first set it on your head. Now, though, you weren't sure how to feel about it. Were you even awake? Was this all a dream? A horrifying thought came to you. What if your nightmares were reality and this was your dream? My lady. Your uncle brought you back to reality. I will soon have to leave to attend to Tomura Shigaraki's needs. Before that, however, I would like to ask you something. You nodded. As you may remember, you have an appointment with your boyfriend in a few days. I was simply wondering if you'd like me to buy you new clothes for you to wear on that occasion. Oh yes. Bakuko wanted you to come to the festival thing they were having. Your stomach turned. You haven't told him yet. How would he react? Kurugiri smiled to himself as he looked at your face. He had foreseen this. My lady, may I ask, have you told young Bakugo about your new... condition? He didn't need to ask. All he had to do was look at your face. What do I do? You asked. And the shadowy man shrugged. I would suggest speaking to him. He said almost confused. Not in person. Yet at least, he continued. You nodded absent-mindedly as the shadowy man led you into the kitchen. After you finished breakfast, you left for your bedroom, phone in hand, and a heavily pounding heart to boot. Your voice had changed too. It was like a more perfect version of your normal one, but would you recognize it? Painfully slow, you dialed in the first few numbers. Would he even be able to pick up? You glance at your clock. Maybe... No, not yet. He went to a high school, right? You didn't. Would interrupting his class get him into trouble? You quickly switched to your messenger app. Hey, I need to talk to you, it's important. Typing this message took you a while. It was as if your own body was recoiling at the idea of talking about it. Fear once again rose inside you. What if your body was rejecting what you had done to it? Should you have waited? Just when you started to get a grasp on a potential answer, your phone rang. He had answered. Is this about Mina? She's already back. I told you. You blinked. This sounded really harsh in your mind. Probably more than he intended. It's just something else happened on the same day, too, ironically. I'm in the changing room right now. We're having training. How important is this? Maybe I can fake something. You blinked, feeling tears run down your cheeks. I did something stupid, and I don't know what to do. And I don't know if it's worse than what I did to your friend. On the other end of the conversation, Bakugo growled. He didn't like it when people kept stuff from him. 
but you had enough common sense to immediately lose it with you. Despite only having seen you three times so far, he felt something. While he would tell you it's love, just to make you happy, he wouldn't call it that just yet. Affection, pity, worry, and even respect. In short, he liked you, and wanted to love you. He hated that, but he understood for love to bloom it takes a while. In fact, he had planned to maybe say it genuinely at the festival when the time was right, just to test the waters. He sighed and told the others he'll need a minute and rush to the toilets. And finally he replied, Okay, just got us five minutes before All Might gets impatient. Please tell me what's wrong. You blinked at the message trying to make sense of it. He resisted the urge to ask him how he got these five minutes and simply said, I think I turned to someone I'm not. Bakugu closed his eyes for a moment. He was very close to a complete meltdown. Why were gods always so cryptic? Meanwhile, you took a selfie and sent it. When Bakugu looked at the girl whose picture appeared on his phone, he blushed. She was attractive. Then he furrowed his brows, connecting the dots. Was, was that you? He had trouble focusing. It was your eyes. They had him mesmerized. When he didn't immediately reply, your quiet sobs turned into loud cries until... That you? Accompanied was a confused emoji. He was taking this quite well. What the hell happened? What were you expecting of him? He chuckled completely unaware of your panicked state. I don't know. What's your answer? What do you want me to say? He bit his lower lip. It took him some effort to not immediately call you hot. I don't know. Well, there you had the answer. Tell me how this happened. People don't just turn into other people. You sighed in desperation. I took a needle that had been sent to me by someone. I thought my dad sent it. Bakugu leaned back on the toilet, rubbing his eyes. Ah, fuck it, he said out loud and typed. I'm okay with this. I still want more answers, though. You physically shrugged, but then the door to your room opened and you put your phone down. It was... Tomura. Uh, what are you doing? Shut up, he said. This thing you have become isn't you and your little boyfriend will hate it. You bit your lower lip. Your anxiety instantly replaced with anger. What a dumb and childish plan has he come up with now? You followed him into the entrance hall, and your jaw dropped in shock. In the middle of the room stood... You? How was that possible? You looked at your hands, then back to the other you. She wasn't turned. Toga has volunteered to replace you. Whenever you are with the heroes, you can... No. Toka chuckled in your voice. I, I mean, it's kind of already happening. How are you doing this? You were in utter disbelief and disgust. Toga made a pose. Your blood, silly. The next time you have a violent outburst, make sure you don't cut yourself on the glass. Your head slowly turned towards Shigaraki. Told you to control your little pets, or whatever you call them. I am. I told her to do it. You forced a grin, hoping it looked at least slightly menacing. I'm going to tell him about this. You inhaled, 
trying to control your emotions. And then he will know. You heard Toga scoff. And you turn towards her. Your body no longer under your control. In less than a second you were next to her, as if you teleported. Your right arm turned to a fist, hitting her stomach. She croaked before flying on her back, two steps away from you. Stop! shouted Tomura. You stretched your right arm towards him, and something shot out of your hand. It gleamed in the light of the entrance hall, hitting his shoulder. He screamed and went down on the ground, blood spewing out of his shoulder. You little... <coughs> coughed. But your attention had returned to Toga, who still was wearing the mask of your former self. You quickly took two steps forward. As you tried to stand up, you kicked her right in the face. Your face. Over and over. Until a sharp pain rose from your leg. You fell on the ground, screaming. Toga had sliced into you with a knife. Not willing to give up, you climbed on top of her. Grabbing the knife-wielding hand with all your strength, while punching her in the face with the other. The girl screamed. Something in her wrist loosened. And she dropped the knife. Your blackened hand let go of her arm was broken and could no longer grab the sharp object. Out of sheer desperation the girl lunged up and harshly bit down on your shoulder and you grabbed her hair, ripping her off of you, followed by a strong hit directly into her mouth, making her lose several teeth. Heavy footsteps now came from your kitchen and Yonomu didn't hesitate upon slamming open the door. The monster immediately ripped Toga out from under you. For a moment he stared confused at Toga than you. Lady? He questioned. No more? You said, voice filled with hatred. Yeah. Kill enough! Shouted your uncle's voice. He was kneeling down next to Tomora. A knife was sticking out of his shoulder. Where did it come from? But you wanted more. Shut up! You shouted into his direction. Step, Step away, away from my brother. brother! The shadow man made a noise somewhere between a scared yelp and a submissive hum. And he slowly walked up two steps on the stairs. You turned your attention to your normal eyes glowing from hatred. No more. Break every bone in her body until she stops looking like me. The monster obeyed as he slammed the girl face first onto the floor, grabbing her right arm and crushing it with his hand. Toga screamed in agony. Fine, I do it! She cried as her body slowly began to leak a clay-like substance. But... Nomo was faster. Before her leg had begun to mold, he stomped on it, breaking it like a twig in half. When the blonde girl finally revealed herself, you snarled at her in disgust. She was naked and shivering, but seemed to have no damage on her, which you hated. Tomura, on the other hand, started to laugh. He slammed his hand on his forehead. <laughs> You're just like your father, my dear sister. Like a wild animal, he got on all fours. Face twisted into a mad grin. And I thought hanging around these heroes will turn you soft. He croaked. You are a monster, just like your little creature over there. Just like the rest of us. And with your new abilities, you're far beyond any of these pitiful humans or heroes in the city. He rolled his tongue out from his mouth. 
I can't wait to see your illusions be shattered and join us. Slowly you walked over to him. And once you stood above him, all you said was, You are a pathetic little worm. Spitting into his face, you now look towards your shadowy uncle. I want these people out of my house. At, at once. once. And I want you to destroy any blood they might still have of me. And burn her knife. You look back at your brother who was fuming. And when you take care of his wounds, your gaze shifts back to Korgiri. Your salt water to his infected, please. Oh, you bitch! Growled Tomura. On second thought, I just teleport him into the ocean. Kurugiri bowed and Shigaraki squeered. No, 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 I, I take it back. You snapped your fingers. Fine. No ocean, then. Bring him back to the lodge so he stops bleeding on my carpet. Your wish is my command, said your uncle. Returning your attention to Toga, you said while smiling darkly. <laughs> You just can't catch a break with me, can you? She mumbled something in response, probably a curse or two. But... But you didn't care, as you held your arm up towards your face. Your veins were glowing in a violent red. <laughs>